Good afternoon, everyone. It is uh, a great uh, privilege for us to be welcoming uh, President Hassan Sheikh and his delegation uh, here to the State Department. Uh, today's meeting has been a long time in the making. Four years ago, at the start of the Obama administration, uh, Somalia was, in many ways, a different country than it is today. The people and leaders of Somalia have fought and sacrificed to bring greater stability, security, and peace to their nation. Uh, there is still uh, a long uh, way to go and many challenges uh, to confront, but uh, we have seen uh, a new foundation for that better future uh, being laid. And today, we are taking an important step toward uh, that future. I am delighted to announce that for the first time since 1991, the United States is recognizing the government of Somalia. Now, before I talk about what comes next for this partnership, uh, it is worth taking a moment to remember how we got here and how far we have come together. When I entered the State Department in January 2009, Al-Shabaab controlled most of Mogadishu and South and Central Somalia. It looked at the time like it would even gain more territory. The people of Somalia had already endured many years of violence and isolation, and we wanted to change that. Uh, we wanted to work together, not only with the people of Somalia, but with governments across the region, the international community, and other like-minded friends. In early 2009, the final transitional federal government began its work. Somali security forces supported by the African Union mission in Somalia and troops from Uganda and Burundi and now Kenya and Djibouti began to drive Al-Shabaab out of cities and towns. Humanitarian aid finally began getting to the people in need. Local governments resumed their work, commerce and travel began to pick up. Now progress was halting at times, but it was unmistakable and today Thanks to the extraordinary partnership between the leaders and people of Somalia with international supporters, uh, Al-Shabaab has been driven from Mogadishu and every other major city in Somalia. While this fight was going on, at the same time, Somalia's leaders worked to create a functioning democratic government. Now that process too was quite challenging, but today for the first time in two decades, this country has a representative government with a new president, a new parliament, a new prime minister, and a new constitution. Somalia's leaders uh, are well aware of the work that lies ahead of them and that it will be hard work, but they have entered into this important mission with a level of commitment that we find admirable. So Somalia has the chance to write a new chapter. When Assistant Secretary Carson visited Mogadishu in June, the first U.S. Assistant Secretary to do so in more than 20 years, and when Undersecretary Sherman visited a few months ago, they discovered a new sense of optimism and opportunity. Now we want to translate that into lasting progress. Somalia's transformation was achieved first and foremost by the people and leaders of Somalia backed by strong African-led support. We also want to thank the African Union, which deserves a great deal of credit for Somalia's success. The United States was proud to support this effort. We've provided more than $650 million in assistance to the African Union mission in Somalia, more than $130 million to Somalia's security forces. In the past two years, we've given nearly $360 million in emergency humanitarian assistance and more than $45 million in development-related assistance to help rebuild Somalia's economy. And we have provided more than $200 million throughout the Horn of Africa for Somali refugee assistance. We've also concentrated a lot of our diplomacy on supporting democratic progress. And this has been a personal priority for me during my time as secretary. So I'm very pleased that in my last weeks here, Mr. President, uh, we're taking this historic step of recognizing uh, the government. 
Now, we will continue to work closely, and the President and I had a chance to discuss in detail some of the, uh, the work that lies ahead and, and what the government uh, and people of Somalia are asking of the United States now. Uh, our, our diplomats, our development experts are traveling more frequently there, uh, and I do look forward to the day when we can reestablish a permanent U.S. diplomatic presence in Mogadishu. We will also continue, as we well know, to face the threat of terrorism and violent extremism. It is not just a problem in Somalia, it is a problem across the region. The terrorists, as we have learned uh, once again in the last days, are not resting and neither will we. We will be very clear-eyed and realistic about the threat they continue to pose. Uh, we have particular concerns about the dangers facing displaced people, especially women, who continue to be vulnerable to violence, rape, and exploitation. So today is a milestone. It's not the end of the journey, but it's an important milestone uh, to that end. We respect the sovereignty of Somalia, and as two sovereign nations, we will continue to have an open, transparent uh, dialogue about what more we can do to help the people of Somalia realize their own dreams. The President had a chance to uh, meet President Obama earlier today at the White House, and uh, that was uh, a very strong signal uh, to the people of Somalia yes. of our continuing support and commitment. So as you, Mr. President, and your leaders work to build democratic institutions, protect human rights and fundamental freedoms, respond to humanitarian needs, build the economy, please know that the United States will be a steadfast partner with you every step of the Thank way. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Secretary, for the great words that you express it on the realities and the ground in Somalia and the future of Somalia and the future of the relationship between Somalia and the United States. First of all, I would like to thank the government and the people of the United States of America for the warm welcome accorded to me and to my delegation for the last two days. I'm very pleased and honored to come to Washington and to meet Madam Secretary to discuss on bilateral issues and the mutual interests of our two countries. I'm, Somalia is a very grateful for the unwavering support from the United States to the people of Somalia. U.S. is the major donor to Somalia, which include humanitarian assistance and help toward security. We both have common interest and common enemy, which we must redouble our efforts to bring peace and stability in Somalia. Somalia is emerging from a very long, difficult period, and we are now moving away from the chaos, instability, extremism, piracy, an era to an era of peaceful and development. We are aiming to make a valuable contribution to the region and the world at large. Today, I provided an update of the huge progress made in the areas of security, political, development, social services, and establishing a reliable and credible governance institutions to Madam Secretary. This is an excellent time to me to visit USA and to meet with US leaders here in Washington as Somalia is entering a new phase which requires from all of us to work hard with a very few to bring peace, with a, with a heart and view to bring peace and stability in Somalia. Today we had a fruitful and frank discussions on many subjects that are of mutual interest to all of us and to the world at large. I'm encouraged by the enthusiasm, the energy, the willingness of interest shown to me and my country, and I'm hopeful that Somalia will reclaim its role in the international landscape and play a more active and useful member of the nations of the world. We are working for, we are working for a Somalia that is at peace with itself and with its neighbors, where its citizens can go about their daily lives in safety, provided their families with a confidence and gratefulness. 
Instability, violent extremism, and crime in Somalia are a threat not only to Somalia, but to the region and the world at large. We look to the future with hope, pride, and optimism. And I finally, I wish Madam Secretary all of the best for her future, and we all miss her greatly. And I won't welcome the new Secretary of State and the new administration that will take over. Somalia will remain grateful to the unwavering support from the United States government in the last 22 years that Somalia was in a difficult era. We remain and we will remain grateful to that great and and I, and, I, and I say in front of you today, thank you, America. Thank you, America. <laughs> thank you so much, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Secretary, it's good to have you back at the podium. Thank you, Margaret. I'm glad to be back. Uh, question for you. Is there um, anything you'd like to see the Algerians do differently in response to the hostage situation that's underway? And more broadly, are there security or policy implications for Westerners, Americans in the region because of what's happening in Mali? Well, Margaret, thanks for asking that very timely question. And, and let me you know, start off by saying that uh, I, I spoke with uh, the Algerian Prime Minister uh, Salal yesterday. I expect to speak with him again uh, this afternoon. Um, our counterterrorism experts have been in close contact with their Algerian counterparts uh, throughout uh, the last days. Um, and we've also been uh, in close consultation with partners uh, around the world, sharing information, working uh, to contribute to the resolution of this hostage situation uh, as quickly as possible. Now, let me say the situation is very fluid. It's in uh, a remote uh, area of Algeria uh, near the Libyan uh, border. Um, the security of our Americans uh, who are held hostage is our highest priority, but of course, uh, we care deeply about uh, uh, the other Algerian and uh, uh, foreign uh, hostages uh, as well. And because of the fluidity and the fact that there is a lot of planning going on, I cannot give you any further details at this time about the current situation on the ground. But I can say that more broadly, what we are seeing uh, in Mali, in Algeria, uh, reflects uh, the broader strategic challenge, first and foremost, for the countries in uh, uh, North Africa and for the United States and uh, the broader international community. Um, instability in Mali has uh, created the opportunity for a staging base and safe haven uh, for terrorists. Uh, and we've had success, as you know, in degrading Al-Qaeda uh, and its affiliates uh, leadership and actions uh, in Afghanistan and Pakistan. We've seen the great cooperation led by African uh, troops uh, through the UN mission that we were just discussing uh, in Somalia. Uh, but let's make no mistake, uh, there is a continuing effort by the terrorists, whether they call themselves one name or Al-Qaeda, uh, to try to destroy the stability, the peace and security uh, of the people uh, of this region. Uh, these are not new concerns. In fact, this has been a top priority for our entire national security team uh, for years. We've worked with the government of Yemen, for example, and uh, their efforts against uh, Al-Qaeda in the, Ar uh, Arabic, uh, the Arabic uh, Peninsula. We've worked in something called the Trans-Sahara Counterterrorism Partnership, uh, which works with 10 countries across the region. So, we have been working on these problems, trying to help build capacity, trying to create um, regional uh, networks to deal with problems in one country that can spill over the border of another, uh, and working uh, to provide American support for the disruption of these terrorist networks. Um, at the UN General Assembly uh, in September, we made the situation in Mali uh, an international um, priority with a central focus on working to um, have a 
an international response. I certainly am um, among a number of uh, officials in our government who've met and, and worked on this issue uh, over the last uh, weeks. In fact, in October, I flew to Algeria uh, for high-level talks with the President and others uh, of, uh, in responsible positions in this uh, security area, trying to determine what more we could do to strengthen our security ties. In November, I sent Deputy Secretary Burns and uh, a team to Algeria to really get into depth about what more we could be doing. Um, and, and then in December, we be, you know, began to uh, reach out uh, more broadly um, in the uh, uh, ongoing counterterrorism uh, discussions that we have. Now, I say all of this because I think it's important that we put this latest incident into the broader context. This incident will be resolved, we hope, with a, a minimum loss of life. Uh, but when you deal with these uh, uh, relentless uh, uh, terrorists, uh, life is not in any way precious to them. Um, but when this incident is finally over, we know we face a continuing, ongoing uh, problem. And we're going to do everything we can uh, to work together to confront and uh, disrupt al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb. We're going to be working with our, um, our friends and partners uh, in North Africa. We are supporting the French operation in Mali with intelligence and airlift. We're working with a half a dozen African countries, as we did with respect to Somalia over so many years, to help them be prepared to send in African troops. Um, in fact, by this weekend, uh, U.S. trainers will be on the uh, continent to offer pre-deployment uh, training and sustainment packages for ECOWAS troops, um, and we are prepared to fund airlift uh, for those troops uh, into uh, Mali. This is difficult but essential work. These are some of the most remote places on the planet, very hard to get to, difficult to have much intelligence from, um, so there, there's going to be a lot of work that has to go into our efforts, but I want to assure uh, the American people that we are committed to this work just as we were committed to Somalia. There were so many times, Mr. President, over the last four years when some people were ready to throw up their hands and say, you know, Al-Shabaab made an advance here and this terrible attack in Mogadishu, and we kept persisting because we believed that with the kind of approach we had taken, we would be standing here today uh, with a democratically elected uh, president of Somalia. Um, so let me just say that um, uh, this is about our security, but it is also about our interests and our values and the ongoing work of how to counter violent extremism, uh, to provide uh, like-minded people who want to raise their families you know, have a better future, educate their children uh, away from extremism and to empower them to stand up against the extremists. And I think it's uh, something that uh, we will be working on for some time, but I am uh, confident uh, that uh, uh, we will be successful over that time uh, to give the people of these countries, as we have worked to give the people of Somalia a chance to chart their own future, uh, which is very much uh, reflective of the values and interests of the United States. Last question today, Somalia Service of VOA, Palestinian Muslims. Thank you. And I have a question, one for the Somali President and one for uh, Madam Secretary. Um, for the Somali President, how would you describe the U.S.-Somali relationship at this moment? My other question is, uh, Madam Secretary, some time ago you announced a dual track policy, which means dealing with Somali government and regional administrations. Um, are you still going to pursue these two approaches? Could you just repeat the end of that? I think I lost a little bit. Um, you announced dual track policy, right. which means dealing with the government and the regional administrations. So are you still going to pursue these uh, two approaches? Yeah, thanks, Palestine. Uh, regarding for Somalia, uh, I think this is a new era. And the United States government and Somalia is having a relationship since the independence of Somalia in 1960s. And the signs and the symbols and the 
remains of this long-term relationship is still visible in Somalia. The schools built by the Peace Corps in the early 1960s is still functional in Somalia. These schools are still used by different people and different parts of Somalia. And from then onward, the, 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 the support that the United States government gave to Somalia is still visible in Somalia. And the last one I was telling is the last 22 years that Somalia was in a difficult times. The United States have always been the, gov the, the country that never left Somalia and have been engaging Somalia with difficult, difficult times at different levels, including when the existence of the Somali nation was threatened in the early 90s. It was the United States forces that saved more than 300,000 lives of Somalis. Had that intervention not been there, it would have been difficult and different today, the situation in Somalia. So that relationship is there, and the commitment and the unwavering support of the United States has always been. And Somalia as part of the international community and part of the world. Somalia, United States is a role model, country for the democracy, for the freedom of people, for the development of human capital. And this model we are going to pursue, of course, as the rest, as the rest of the world. So the relationship was there in the past. It's now there. And today I'm here standing in front of you to further improve that relationship in the context of the current realities in the Somalia, in the region, and the continent of Africa. So it's, it's there and it will be there in the, in the future. Thank you very much for those very strong words, Mr. President. Today we are taking a new step in our engagement with the recognition of the government. Uh, we believe strongly that uh, the successful conclusion of Somalia's uh, political transition with uh, a new president, a prime minister, a parliament, a constitution, uh, marks the beginning of a new era of uh, Somali uh, governance. And therefore, one of the reasons we wanted the president to come was to discuss the way forward. Um, now, we still have the excellent uh, work by the U.S. Special Representative for Somalia, Ambassador uh, Swan, who leads uh, a team, as you know, uh, committed to working with uh, the government and people of Somalia. But, but our uh, position now is the work that we did to help establish a transitional government, to support the fight against al-Shabaab, to provide humanitarian assistance, is now moving into a new era, as the President said. Uh, I believe that our job now is to listen to the government and people of Somalia who are now in a position to uh, tell us, as well as other partners around the world, what their plans are, how they hope to achieve them. So we have moved into uh, a normal sovereign nation to sovereign nation uh, uh, position, and we have moved uh, into uh, an era where we're going to be a good partner, a steadfast partner uh, to Somalia as Somalia uh, makes the decisions uh, for its own future. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.